All right, guys, basic electron configuration. <clears throat> As we've learned, uh, Niels Bohr predicted that an atom has different energy levels surrounding it. <clears throat> but as we found out, uh, it's not like a planetary system where the electrons will orbit around in set patterns. Each different energy level can be subdivided further into sub-energy levels. Okay? In order to determine the electron configuration of any element in the periodic table, you have to see the periodic table as being broken down into four different regions. Groups 1 and 2 we call the S uh, subshell, the S shell, and helium over here is actually a part of the S shell. It's positioned on the periodic table all the way on the right because of the chemical properties of it and the way that it bonds, <clears throat> but it should be in uh, the S block. The P block runs all the way from uh, the top left here to the bottom right, this region right here is known as the P block. Your D block is the area where it's lower. You see that the periodic table has the, kind of like these two towers right here. Well, the D block runs the lower portion all the way down, and then the F block at the bottom. Okay. So the way that we actually determine the electron configuration of an element, we have to go ahead and have three different things. First, we have to show the row or the period that it's in. We have to show the letter of the subshell and then we have to tell how many electrons have filled in there. So for the more, most simple element hydrogen at the top we see that it is period one, it's in the S block and it's the first one. So this 1S1 right here would correspond to the electron configuration of hydrogen. And you can do more difficult ones just by reading the periodic table like a map. Uh, let's say that we want to find potassium. Well, potassium is element number 19 right here. So all we have to do is start with the first element, hydrogen, and read the periodic table as we go across and just write down everything that you cross until you get to the element that you're looking for. So, for example, we want potassium, so the first thing we get, remember the first number is the period number, so that would be a 1. The first block is S. So there's hydrogen helium in there, so there's two elements. So we, we go through 1S2, those electrons are there. We've got to the end of the period, so we have to go down to the second period now. So we're in the second period. The second period does have an S block, and it has a P block, so we write the S first. And there are two electrons there, so 2s2, 2p6. Remember, we're not done until we're to this element right here. We're trying to get all the way to potassium. So after we're done with 2p6, that was element number 10. Well, element number 11 starts the third period. 3, it's the s block, and there are two elements there. s always has two electrons. Then we come across to the p. It's still the third period, so 3 P, P's fill up with 6. We need to go all the way through. That wraps us back around the 19, which is the element that we're looking for. So we need to include the address of the element that we're trying to find. It's the fourth period. It is the S block. And there's only one electron there. It's the first element in the S block in the fourth period. So this would be the complete electron configuration. If we wanted to go ahead and do the Bohr model, for potassium, we'd show a nucleus, okay, we'd show protons, we'd show neutrons. There are 19 protons, and if you look on a periodic table, the mass is 39, so there'd be 20 neutrons in a nucleus. Now, we can tell how many electron shells we're going to need based upon the number of uh, the highest period number that we have. Since it goes to the fourth period, I know that I will need four electron shells. Okay. Now in order to determine what goes into each one, the numbers right here correspond to the subshell. There's a number one, so the electrons from there go there. Now I've got two number twos. Well, 
both of these electrons get added together to fill that shell. I also have two threes, so the electrons from these get added together to fill this shell. And I have a four, and those electrons go there. So there's two electrons in the first one. In the second uh, shell, I have two here and six here, so that's a total of eight electrons in the second shell. In the third shell, I have two here and six here, so there's eight electrons that will fill into the third shell. And all I'm left with is the fourth shell, and there's one electron that fits in there. And your electron should add up to equal your protons, because protons and electrons are attracted to each other. Two plus eight is ten, plus eight is eighteen, plus one is nineteen. That is complete. Now, to do the Lewis dot structure, all you need is the symbol for the element, K for potassium. And you just take a look just at your outer shell electron, just that farthest electron shell from the nucleus. There's one electron in there, so that corresponds to just one dot. Okay, Let's do bismuth now. Well, bismuth is right here on the periodic table. It's number 83. So we have to complete the entire configuration until we land right here. So the thing about these is they all start the same way because we're just kind of reading the address of how to get there. It's kind of directions of how to get there. You can think of it like that. So it's going to be 1s2. Then we go to 2s2. Then we come across to the 2p block, 2p6. Then we're down to the 3s2, 3p6. That wraps around to the 4. Now be careful. After we get out of s2, now we hit the d block for the first time. And as you see right here, it is the 3d. Now while we're in the fourth period, the d block starts with a third period number. So this would at this point be 3D, 10. There are 10 elements in that block. Once we come out of the D block, we're back into the P. The S in the P use the period number for it. So we're out of the 3D block. Now we're into the 4P block. So that would be 4P6, because we're still going until we get to here. Once we get to the end of the 4P6, we wrap around to the 5s2 back into the d block you notice the second uh, period I'm sorry the second row of the d block is the 4d so that would be 4d 10 then we continue we're into the 5p so I'll wrap it around here 5p 6 this brings us to the 6s All right, now at this point, we have to realize that 57 doesn't continue to 72. This part of the periodic table is positions out of here just to go ahead and make space so our periodic table doesn't have to be so unwieldy and large. They, these elements belong right here, but they have just been put down to the bottom. Same thing here, 89 to 94, this continues right here. So this right here even though it's in the sixth period you can see it's the 4f so we've done the 6s2 now we get to the elements that come here so we have to continue as 4f and there are 14 elements there so we go all the way through there 71 we got to continue to 72 because we're trying to get all the way to 83 well look where we are we're in the d block now so that will be 5d10 to get through this puts us here so we're now back into the 6p block which is where we're ultimately going to end up so that'll be 6p that is the first element second element third element so there are three electrons right there so we end up with 6p3 okay it's real simple if we want to go ahead and do the Bohr model for bismuth bismuth is bi okay. there are 83 protons
not certain of the neutrons. Again, you just take your uh, mass minus your protons to find your neutrons. And you put your neutrons right there. Well, how many electron shells am I going to need? Well, the highest number I have of any period is six. So I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six electron shells. And I'm just putting the electrons in based upon the number in the front. Well, I only have one number one shell, and there are two electrons there. So I'll put my two electrons in the first shell. Uh, we're looking for twos now. I have two twos. Two and a six is eight, so I get eight electrons in that shell. Now I add all my threes. I've got a three here, here, and here. Two electrons here plus six is eight. Add that to the ten there. I have eighteen electrons in my third shell. Now we're counting the fours. Two here, six here. So I'm at eight. I've got ten more here, so that's eighteen. And if you remember, we went to the four F at the bottom. So that's 14 plus the 18 I had. 32 electrons will fill into this shell. Let's take a look at the fifth shell now. I've got 2 here, plus 6 here is 8, plus 10 more is 18. Sixth shell, 2 here, 3 more here for a total of 5 electrons. So this would be the complete electron configuration. If you added all these up, they would equal to 83, because every proton wants an electron. And to do the uh, Lewis dot diagram, it's only the farthest electron shell, the outermost electron shell. In this case, we can see that there are five electrons there. So we draw our dots by imagining four places, top, bottom, left, and right doesn't really matter where you start as long as you put one dot on each side before you start doubling them up. So I need five, so I'll start one, two, three, four, and five. That would be the dot diagram for bismuth.